Hello, is this working? Yes. Hello, Johnny Cotton from Reuters. Um, a question, when you found out and you conducted these investigations and discovered that these two individuals were travelling on stolen passports, how much of a surprise was that? As in how, in your view, likely is it that on a very large number of flights around this region, people are travelling on stolen passports? How representative is, is, is this, in your view? So if you ask my colleagues, they will tell you I've been talking about this for something like seven or eight years, saying how important it is. When we started, our database only had about 10,000 passports and a few hundred consultations per year. Our database has grown over 40 million documents. We've had over 800 million consultations and 60,000 plus hits. I gave a speech last November, I believe, where I said we estimate that four out of every 10 passengers, I'm looking at my experts, four out of every 10 passengers on international flights um, could be in possession of passports reported lost or stolen. So I think it's, it's far too common. What's even more shocking is the number of times people cross borders without having their passports screened against Interpol's database. And those of us who travel at all, we know we as um, good travelers, we empty our pockets, we empty our, lap, uh, our bags, we expose our laptops, our, lap, um, our iPads, et cetera, and we show our passports. And we expect when we're showing our passports that they're being screened against databases where you might find stolen passports. And unfortunately, in far too many cases, it's not happening. And that's why we believe this, this tragedy of MH370 is a great opportunity for more countries to consult Interpol's databases and for the world to recognize that countries need help in the form of private sector partnerships that we hope to um, uh, continue to launch um, using what we call is uh, what we call is iCheckit.